welcome. Um, so today we'll be talking, um, this is more for middle school than for any other group. So I hope most of y'all are middle school, maybe high school. If you're upper elementary, it'll work too. Um, some of the resources that were shared here for the most part are gonna be for uh, primarily for middle school students. All right, yeah, go eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> and sixth and seventh and fifth and all, all the grades, yay. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, just so, so y'all know a little bit, bleh, just so y'all know a little bit about me, coffee is catching up way too fast. Um, I, my name is Tara Linney. And I'm a coach. I've been in education uh, for the last 12 years. I've worked around the world. Um, I'm a lot of different things. You can see them up here on the GIF. I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, I did just create a course on su the supporting students um, for ISTE. And it starts in a couple of weeks. And so this kind of goes right-ish along with that. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. I need two different clickers. <laughs> All right, here we go. So middle schoolers, what word would you use to describe middle schoolers? Go ahead and throw that in the chat. <laughs> Okay, we got crazy, we got lit, we got weird, different. Yeah, different's nice. <laughs> Intense. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep, I'm hearing a lot of you right now. <laughs> Needy, oh yeah, uh huh. They think that they're adults, but they're not quite acting like it, right? They're super social. They share everything, maybe a little too much of everything. They might not be aware of how social they are or how things are around them. <laughs> and they're definitely growing. The mind is still growing with our middle schoolers. So we've got to have that patience. <laughs> and there's some ways in which we can help them. So... Um, let's see, but so our students are not socially aware, so they might be social, but they're, they are not socially aware. They don't understand that there are things that happen online and that they can cause problems later in life, right? They're not aware of what's going on in the world. Um, th they're not aware. They're just not. <laughs> So how can we create space for them to become socially aware within our classrooms? Um, I think of weird, uh, weird Ted, right? When I think of this, like, oh, I wasn't aware of that. How many times do you hear that? Oh, I didn't know. No, you weren't listening. <laughs> so social emotional learning. Um, there's five different parts of social emotional learning. Anybody familiar with social emotional learning? Yep. You're like, yep, read the book. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so we're not going to look at all of the parts. We are going to look at social awareness and we're going to look at um, how students can work with one another, that relations, the relationship skills part. Admit. All right. We're going to start with relationship skills. And so let me actually click here. So if you want a link to the presentation, it is on this bit.ly. Um, and everything in the presentation is clickable as well. All right, so relationship skills. Relationship skills, the main things about relationship skills with students is about building relationships with, with uh, students and groups that are different from our students, right? So they might be skills with somebody from a different country, skills with somebody who speaks a different language, right? And when somebody speaks a different language, that doesn't mean that you speak your language louder. <laughs> and our students might not know that. 
And so the other thing is communicating clearly. Are they saying what they mean? Are they meaning what they say? Um, are they keeping everything in their mind or are they bringing things to the forefront that people need to be aware of and know about? Working together. One of the hardest things for students to be able to do is to work with one another, right? We put them on a project and one person does 80% of that project. <laughs> one person is like, oh no, it's not the right way and they just take it over or nobody else wants to do anything. And so how do we work with students and build, um, build up how they work with one another? All right. A couple of other things is seeking help. So when our students need help, how are we helping them? Um, how do they know? It has with... been like horrible, but like. <laughs> Let me just, okay. They muted themselves. All right. As you jump in, if you just want to mute yourself, uh, <laughs> you can take yourself off mute for questions and stuff. I'm just trying to eliminate a lot of background noise. Um, so sometimes when it comes to seeking help, students uh, don't always ask for help or they don't know how to ask for help or they don't feel comfortable asking for help. Right. Um, also, when they're having problems with other students. Right. Um, how can we help them with those problems? And so when I think of relationship skills, I think of these two, <laughs> right? Like, all right, I've got an umbrella. How can I share my umbrella with you? It's raining. It's not just raining on me. It's raining on both of us. So how we do that and how we create space for that in technology is that we start by getting students to build relationships with, with one another. We did this in the last session. So if you were in that, um, this is this little part right here is a repeat. One activity, that, like, ugh, bleh, one activity that you can do is something called Zoom around the room. Has anybody done a Zoom around the room before? I've also heard that it's called hide and seek, which is a little scary movie sounding to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody done a uh, Zoom around the room before? All right, I see a no, I see a no. Okay, so we are going to do this activity. Um, and Kelly Clarkson actually does this on her channel. Um, whenever she has a guest come in, they do a Zoom around the room and she's like, find something furry. And then like whoever comes back to the screen first gets a point. Um, when it comes to doing this for relationship skills, it's all about getting students to understand a little bit about one another in a fun way. And so for middle schoolers, this can be really fun. Um, yeah, so how it works is that I'm gonna say something like find something yellow and you're gonna find something yellow, bring it back to the screen and then you're gonna share what it is and why you chose it. Maybe you had multiple things and I see somebody with the yellow shirt. <laughs> All right, so we'll do this first one for fun and then we'll do two more. All right, find something yellow. All right, and who would like to share? I found my Lysol wipes. <laughs> yes, Lysol wipes. <laughs> All right, who else? My keychain. Wait, I don't see it, hold on. Oh yes, your keychain. Awesome. All right, we'll do two more shares. Who's got something you want to share? Go for it. All right. This was our caution to know that, um, you know, be aware of the students that we deal with and accept them for who they are and just be prepared for things that's coming from your students. Excellent. That was like a mic drop one. I don't know if anybody can go after that. All right, and then I see um, a post-it note. Is that a post-it note? Yes. Okay. <laughs> My background is in. 
That's awesome. And so um, mine was a yellow magnetic sticky note. It'll like literally stick to like walls and like clothes, well, not clothes, but it'll stick to like surfaces. Um, yeah, so there's a story behind everything that somebody chose. Now we're gonna do two more. All right, find something that you made. <laughs> And three, two, one. All right, who's got something that they want to share? I have a fidget bracelet that I made with all the kids in one of my groups. So we put beads on a pipe cleaner and you just play with it and use it for coping. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, I have a, I made a sign. It says, when given the choice between being right and being kind, choose kind. Yes, every day. Okay, um, me again. <laughs> I'm at Rise Academy, so we get to paint our uh, ceiling tiles. And this one I made. Second Chances, New Beginnings is our model here at Rise Academy. That is awesome. I might need to borrow that saying. <laughs> I made this sign um, about my different travels. I'm a social studies teacher and I made this sign a couple years ago and it's got a lot of the different places that I've been. So this is my Miss West sign. I lost a W. <laughs> <laughs> you and I could be best friends with the travel part. Yes, yes. How many states are you up to? I haven't counted yet. I just came back from um, Tennessee last night. Ooh. I hadn't been to Gatlinburg to the cabin, so I just went there and just got back yesterday. So I got to add that one too. That's <laughs> awesome. I got yeah. 42 states and 35 countries. 42? Oh my yep. God. I got to catch you. <laughs> I Those catch Northeast, the Northwestern ones are the hardest. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. All right, we'll do one more share before we do a find. I have this knee collage. A quilt. Yeah, it's a knee collage that I make every year. This was last year's and I have my students to make one and it just showcases who we are in different facets. So I have my students to do that. Oh, that's great. And I see somebody up top made a quilt. Yeah, uh, I let the kids write on it with uh, color markers during stressful times. They can color it. Then I just wash it in the washing machine. Oh, that sounds so calming. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more zoom around the room. And let's find something either edit 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 editable or drinkable. <laughs> Chick-fil-A biscuit. Yum. Oh, that's right. Y'all are in Georgia. Water. <laughs> Orange juice. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Snack mix. <laughs> <laughs> and see, for relationship building, you can actually bring it into math. Um, when you do like graphing lessons and looking at data and stuff like that, if you do one of these zoom around the room types of things with your students and you choose like find something edible and then you want to differentiate between like food and drinks, you can start to look at the data that way and then actually bring it into the curriculum as a way to build relationships, but also look at data. If you like data, anybody like data? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so the next thing that we're gonna look at here is Flipgrid. Has anybody ever used Flipgrid before? Some, okay, excellent. So Flipgrid is really great because like your kids are about to be coming back after having like the summer off, right? 
And so with Flipgrid, it's a way for students to see one another and get to know a little bit about their classmates and build those relationship skills before they get in person. Um, and the process of using Flipgrid is really not much different than some of the social media that students might be using, right? If they're on TikTok, you know they're having dance parties with their friends. If they're, I don't even know what else is out there, Snapchat, Insta. I, yeah, I don't think they've made it to Clubhouse just yet. Um, <laughs> but also Clubhouse is just voice. And I see some surprise faces and they're probably thinking, um, actually they have, okay. So I might be wrong. <laughs> All right, so with Flipgrid, if you ask a broad question before your students come back, just make it real broad. What is something that you learned over the summer? You're, with middle schoolers, you're gonna have some that come in and say, ooh, I learned how to do this. And they're gonna have some like funny like dance move or something like that. Some might just, record, might just be recording themselves talking about what they did. Um, so just like when we had the Zoom around the room, everybody brought something different. When you have this opportunity for students to record a response on Flipgrid, they're bringing something different because you're not grading them and saying like, well, you didn't show like on this four point rubric, you didn't like describe when you learned it or why you learned it, right? Um, but you can have those questions here. When students go to record their response, It'll look like this. And if you've never used Flipgrid before, um, then you can change the effects over here and empower the students, especially if they're new students, um, they can use filters. Like there's nothing that says that they have to show the background of like where their home is or anything like that. They can use this rainbow filter. They can use mystery. I don't get how mystery is different from, okay. Because it's mysterious. Okay, anyhow. Um, <laughs> And then you've got the pixelated one here um, with the, uh, the pixelated, and then you've got the, the bricks as well, right? And so if a student wants to kind of filter their background and like make it so that you can't see their face, when the whole purpose is to hear their voice more than anything, <clears throat> then this is a great way to get students to do that. Um, they can also add different effects and texts and boards and stickers and things like that and make it super fun. Okay, video on video is not super friendly. <laughs> so Zoom and Flipgrid video mm, together. All right, so Flipgrid is one great thing that you can do with your students. And actually with this Flipgrid, um, you can copy that and use that with your own students as well if you'd like. Um, another great resource is Common Sense Media. One thing that I really like about Common Sense Media is that over the last five years, they've changed the way that they do their lessons. Um, and what I mean by that is that if you don't have a whole lesson period, if you don't have a whole 45 minutes, then they pull out what the important parts are that can be done in like 15 minutes. Um, so here you can go to eighth grade. We'll pick on eighth grade because I remember seeing that in the chat. <laughs> and when you're talking about building relationship skills, um, eighth grade has the big relationship one around sexting and relationships. So based on what your school says in terms of teaching that aspect, that can be something. Um, when you go into seventh grade and the middle school is very much built up so that if you were to put in sixth, seventh and eighth and go to relationships and communication, um, then maybe there's something that is talked about in seventh grade that could also apply to eighth grade or something that is talked to, talked about in sixth grade that they need a reminder of by the time they get into eighth grade right <laughs> because chatting safely online or like my social media life if they don't have those social media accounts like until they're older that might be something that is addressed when they're older has anybody used common sense media before No? Oh my goodness. Um, so what you'll see here also is that like it tells you and it's going to make me sign in. Oh no, it's not. Excellent. So there's like a student video and they've updated their student videos lately, um, which is really nice. Um, you can also see like Common Core. So where, um, where in Common Core it fits in. So if you've got an ELA lesson, 
um, and it's using these standards, for example, if you use Common Core or if you use ISTE standards, really any of these standards, um, then you can see the alignment within that. Um, yeah. It gives you the lesson slides. It gives you a video that you can watch with students. So, and it gives you a preview of all of these things. There are a too. lot of people out there who aren't who they like totally free. So if we watch this one just for a quick moment, then you can kind of see what um, the students would be seeing on their end. And then it also provides you with questions for you to like get your students to talk about with regards to how they build relationships and how they talk to one another online. They say they are in small ways and big ways. I think it is totally fine for someone to become friends with someone online, but you have to be very, very careful. You know, they're thinking over their texts and their pictures could be fake. On social media, you can talk to people, but like you can't really get your emotion across. Talking to strangers online, it's 50-50. Some of the benefits of online relationships, it's definitely easier to interact and talk to people because you th you're thinking about what you're saying and you just are more comfortable. Right, so some of the greatest parts about having a friendship with someone online is that they're easily accessible. You can just text them, be like, hey, what's up? And you can have that sort of immediate connection all the time. If you are in a smaller community, becoming friends with someone online allows you to become friends with someone who has a similar interests as you and you can have a really good friendship with someone. I really do enjoy playing video games. Connecting with other people, whether they're strangers or if I'm playing with my friends and talking to them and you know, doing something together. I think that that's really fun that we can all enjoy the same thing. You don't feel like you actually have to deal with this person. So if they don't like what you're saying, they can leave. And if you don't like what you're say what they're saying, you can leave. Sometimes all right. So that's a little preview and it's here in terms of like the student video that's a part of the lessons within Common Sense Media. So students get to see people who look like themselves, who feel the same way that they do, sharing their experience. And then it creates, um, it, it makes it easier and creates space um, to have that conversation with students within your classroom, right? Because it's not like teachers saying this, this and this and this and this and this, but they're actually hearing it from students. All right, Nearpod. Yes, no, never, newish, yes. Okay, lots of yes. Okay. <laughs> so did you know that Nearpod has SEL moments lessons? No, yes, a little bit of both. Okay, excellent. So um, we'll take a quick little stroll through these and know that um, if you use Nearpod or if you have access to Nearpod, then there are all of these social emotional learning lessons that uh, go in with self-management, self-awareness, like all of the different parts of social emotional learning. So this one in particular is called iMessages. And so when we preview through here, preview the activity, you'll see that there's a poll that's built in. And this is like a nice little check-in poll where you're seeing, okay, how are, how are students in my class feeling right now? Then also with Nearpod, um, they get this opportunity. So imagine you're working with a partner on a project for math class. You feel like you are doing all the work. OMG, didn't we just talk about this? Right, this is like so middle school. Um, <laughs> what could you say to your partner, right? And so before starting that project-based learning, um, or problem-based learning before getting students to work together on something. Going over this Nearpod lesson with them and getting them to understand about I statements and think through, what would I do when this happens? Because this will happen. It gives them time to think. And when they start working on those projects together, you can then remind them of, remember when we talked about this in this lesson? So instead of putting out burning fires, 
do the prevention part and introduce them to these are these could be problems when you work in groups and here are some ways to work through them. So I messages um, and I message is a statement that begins with I and does not place blame on someone else. So what did I do? How do I feel? Instead of saying you did this that made me feel this way. I feel this way because this happened. And it really gets into exploring what are I messages. Um, and it's not a super long lesson either. So with this, on the student end, so if we were to, to do this, for example, on the student end, they would see the question here and you would see the data on the background in terms of how are students answering to these questions. And you can see there's only 15 slides, so there's an opportunity to practice with a partner with changing the you message into an I message. And I feel blank when blank, please blank. So I feel angry when you don't listen to me. So please start listening to me or something like that, right? Um, so what are your thoughts on just this preview of using Nearpod SEL moments with your students? Anybody wanna come off mute or add in the chat? Right, because when we are talking about like building space in our classes for students to build relationships with one another in middle school, if they don't have those relationship skills, like it's okay. It's something that can be worked on in a fun way using this resource from Nearpod. And there's polls, all of that. All right. And admit, there we go. All right. So the next thing that we're going to look at ooh, I think so. So Kelly, I see your question. Uh, actually, mm, yeah, let me check on that. I think the answer is yes, but let me check on that. All right. The social. Po Oops, nope. Trying to admit somebody. Okay, um, so social awareness. Social awareness is really, really important in these days, right? Because if we think in the terms of like, I, me, my, then we're not thinking about other people and we're not thinking about what other people are going through. And this is especially um, important for middle school students because when they're in middle school, it gives them like, they're right in that middle ground. Once you get in high school, you're kind of left to your own devices, figuratively and literally. <laughs> when you're in middle school, it's like that middle part where they're still building, where they can still build upon their social awareness of how others might feel. And a big part of that is empathy. So empathy is being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand where they're coming from. And building that in humans is really hard, but also really important. Um, so we are going to look at some different tools and different ways that we can build our students' social awareness, okay? The first one, so the world is changing as we know it. And because it's changing, there might be some topics that we're not um, sure of how to approach. So learning for justice is a great place to go um, for different lessons um, 
for different things for students as well. And so with Learning for Justice, you can filter the lessons, say that you're sixth through eighth grade, choose what topic, right? What subject, apply that. And then what you will see um, are different lessons that can be used with students all around learning for justice. And it's based on the topic, it's based on the grade, um, and they're all free. Yay. Has anybody ever used learning for justice before? Nope? Okay. So this, I like this um, resource because if there are topics that you're not familiar with or that you don't know how to teach, or if a student's bringing it up and you're like, oh, but how and where and all that, um, then this is a great resource to use um, to learn about like voting, for example. And it has everything that you need, um, all of the questions that you need, the lesson plan, um, the procedure, all the things. And um, the CC assess the standards, if you use the standards, or if you have different standards, um, they could be similar, okay? All right, so learning for justice is super great. Another great thing to do with students is to make them aware that where they are is not the same in other parts of the state, the country, or the world. But we can tell them that all we want to, but until they see that, they're not going to understand that. Um, so this is something that I like to do. And if you are aware of SDGs, has anybody heard of SDGs before? All right. Um, so we'll look at SDGs in a um, little while, but they're basically world goals. So what are the goals for the world? If we're going to save the world by 2030, what do we have to do? And there's 17 of them. And so one of them is understanding what people have to go through to get water. And our students think, okay, turn on a faucet and there's water. I can tell you from experience that is not the case around most of the rest of the world, okay? But we can say that and say that and say that, but until students see it, they're not going to believe it. One way to get them to see it is that instead of changing this, or instead of having this as the world, let's say, all right, what continent do we wanna look at? Africa. Okay. So if we go to Africa, then we say, okay. We get this scale of the income from poorest to richest. We can then click on these bold ones here. Um, now, if we click on those, that'll change it to the poorest or richest. All right, in South Africa, we can click on this video and this will show us what the income is per month. So $3,755 a month. And this is the type of place where you can live for that. And this is what it looks like to get water, okay? When that's your income. We can then go to the lower end and X that out here. So if we go to the poorest part, where the income in Burkina is $29 a month, 29 USD. This is what it's like to get water. Students, it's important for students to understand that and have that social awareness that life in different countries is not the same as life in the US. 
life in different parts of the U.S. is not the same as in Georgia, right? You can go from one town to another and life would be different. So this is one way in which we can show students that aspect and start to have conversations with students around, well, did you know that in Africa, this is what it's like to get water? Or if we're looking more at, so let's choose a topic. Based on what you see here, what are you interested in? All right, kitchens. So what do kitchens look like? And we can see that kitchens, depending upon where you are, will look different. And it's not judging and saying, oh, well, that one's better than that one. But it's getting students to understand that based on geographically where places are, where the income is, where places are, that the living situations will be different. It doesn't make one good and one bad. It makes it different. All right, so that was Africa. If we were to take a look at Asia, Asia is super duper vast. And with that, you would see super different, like vast, um, like prices and like ways in which people get water or what their kitchen look like. Okay. Oh, different schools. Um, that's a great question. So if we go into kitchens and then oh, I can just search here for school. There is something related to schools. I'm just not sure exactly which topic that's in, but that is a great question. But I'll let you explore that. <laughs> because schools are built differently. Um, having had lived in Singapore, there were local schools that were way different from international schools, right? And so even within a small community, things look different. And getting students to understand and be aware of just because you have this doesn't mean that other people have access to that as well. Um, another really great thing is, so Chanel, does everybody know Chanel? If you don't know Chanel, she's really awesome. Um, so this is one of her tweets, which I really love because um, when you're working with students and different groups, it's important for them to be switched into different groups, like within the year, right? So you don't want group A to always be together. You want them to be separated. You want them to get to know others because as they get to know others, they start to understand others more instead of just being with their friends all the time. And so here is a way that you can do that, um, how you can change the seats and change the groups and get students to understand one another. All right, empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share feel uh, the feelings of someone else. We wanna start teaching empathy like as soon as possible, right? But sometimes in middle school, empathy just gets lost and they're like, me, 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 my, my, my. Um, so one really nice way to bring empathy back to the forefront is this tool called Empatico. Has anybody heard of Empatico before? So if you are into like worldwide connections and connecting students with others from other backgrounds, maybe with different accents, maybe, um, maybe they speak multiple languages, maybe they look different, you know, um, Empatico is a really great way to do that. And it's a free sign up. Let me see if I'm still signed in here. All right, so with Empatico, you can change the um, 
age of your students. So this is really great for middle school. And then you can change the schedule and you can also change the languages. And then once you've done that, you can find a potential match with another class from either another part of the country um, or another country altogether. And you're probably like, okay, find a match and then what? Well, and then there's an activity library for things that the classes can work on together. So this is really nice. Um, you see that there are classes from Maine. Like I haven't even been to Maine. The other traveler in the group, have you been to Maine? I'm gonna take that as a no. <laughs> All right, so um, there's like Maine, there's Arkansas, there's Mexico, Brazil, um, New York, and all of these different places that maybe our students haven't even been to, right? There's a Florida. Um, and there's um, Abu Dhabi as well. And so this is a way that you can match with other classes and get your students to see like in real life online, um, other students from other classes and other states and countries and places. Um, and with the activity library, there are so many different things that you can do. So um, how to be kind, art from the heart, ways we play, food with friends, the weather. You know, when we have nothing to talk about, we tend to go back to the weather, but like there's a lot to talk about with the weather right now. And so um, why is it like, for example, students can connect with one another to talk about why it's smoggy in the Northeast based on the fires in the Northwest. Like that's thousands of miles. All right, so Empatico, really, really great to get students outside of the classroom. All right, any questions before we jump into the next part? We all good? We all like, I'm setting up my sign in right now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I know that this group likes graphs, and so if you like graphs, you're gonna love this. Data, data, graphs, all that stuff. So the New York Times has graphs that you can use to teach about inequalities. And how this is important to social awareness is that they're like real time, not real time like happening right now, right now data, but they're data, like actual data that students can then look at the graph of and start to ask questions about. So we're gonna do one together. And we are going to look at, all right, the cost of living. What do you see and what do you wonder? Feel free to come off mute or you can um, type in the chat and let's have a little chat. Mm -hmm. Everything is getting more expensive, like everything. <laughs> See, so like we're like we're talking in the chat right now. You can have students talk in a chat as well because you're going to have some students and they're going to be like, uh-uh, but I see this. Okay, well, let's talk about that because this is a very real thing. So how can we bring this into our spaces to teach students not just about data and social studies, but be more socially aware? 
into what's going on. Okay. Everybody see how you can do this with students? Yep. I know I'm looking at the clock. It's almost lunchtime. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So the um, next thing that we're going to look at is <laughs> so sometimes when we think about the world, um, we are wrong right we think that we know what's happening um and sometimes we actually don't like we're way off and not just for us but also for our students and so how can we get them to like think and then how can we have a larger conversation around what is correct and what's incorrect so let's choose a goal All right, so go ahead and in the chat, whoever can put a number in, numbers one through nine. And whatever number comes in first is the one that we'll choose. Five. Okay, so we're gonna go for the first question. All right, worldwide. So, what you're going to do when you read the question, I'm going to do a three, two, one. And then in the chat, you're going to put if you think it's 5, 15, or 25%. All right, so think for a moment. Three, two, one. We're going to go with 5%. What? And when the students see the answer and they're like, uh-uh, I wasn't wrong. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're wrong like 78% of people. And let's explore more. Okay. And then you can look into other questions. So why are people wrong about this? All right, we're gonna do another question. And think for a moment, is it 50, 120 or 190? Three, two, one. All right, we're going to go with 120 on this one. What? And we are wrong again, just like 93% of people. <laughs> So our students, when they take these questions, for example, in our classes, um, they can start to see, man, I was wrong. Wait, but so were the majority of other people, right? That they're not alone, that being wrong is normal. Um, and it's understanding what is the correct answer and why do we go straight to the lowest or straight to the highest? We'll take one more question. Okay, so think, is it around 2%, around 10%, or around 18%? And three, two, one, waterfall. All right, we're gonna go with 10, and it was 18. We were kind of 50-50 on that in the chat. Um, so, but we were wrong like 89% of people. <laughs> See, the majority is wrong. So that means we feel better about being wrong <laughs> or there's more to learn. Um, so 
And then when they go into more here, they can look at the data and see this. And then this is a really great way also to explore um, these questions even further, like in a social studies lesson um, or related to something that you're doing with e, um, ELA or even that.